The veneers are shaking. The crime stories are shaking. The cargo is shaking. Los Angeles is shaking. The presidential election is shaking. I don't know who's shaking, Lil Yachty or Caribou. Nick Cannon is shaking and he made a couple comments on a podcast that I would honestly, you know what, if I was to be honest and run it back, y'all, I would say Chrissy's thoughts are shaking because I have thoughts on this. We're just going to have a time where I'm going to tell y'all what I think about what Nick Cannon said on a podcast about his relationship with Mariah Carey and why it did not last. I got a couple thoughts. This is going to be quick, but this is going to be insightful. Y'all going to be able to talk to me. So let's talk about it. So first of all, I am number one lamb, Mariah Carey stan, okay? I know Mariah Carey's real life all the way down to the T, baby. Quiz me and I will win, okay? So Mariah Carey and Nick Cannon got married. And this is her, you know, not her first her husband. Her first husband was Tommy Mottola. And y'all remember Tommy Mottola was this very powerful white man that was so powerful. Michael Jackson was going up against him for the things that he did in the music industry back in the day. He's really the reason why she was able to come out and have the career that she had. So you got to look at Mariah as someone who ended up first kind of as a sugar baby. You know what I mean? Leading into a relationship with Nick Cannon where she's the breadwinner, you know? Hold on to that part of the thought. Well, she went through a lot of abuse with Tommy Mottola, sick stuff. Like, she couldn't leave the house. She couldn't really talk to nobody. Guards everywhere. Everything's very regulated. I've told y'all the story before about how Tommy Mottola's goons were about to beat up Jermaine Dupri because Mariah Carey and the brat st snuck out and got McDonald's. Like it was, it was that much of a, a, a all seeing eye on Mariah Carey when she was going through this industry first starting out. So when she got with Nick Cannon, that's a freedom she never experienced. That's a black man. Cause if you know Mariah Carey, that's a real that's a real, okay, that's damn near a gangster bitch for real, y'all. Like, Mariah Carey, she's a good hood jam. She is. And that's what we always loved about her. And when she got with Nick Cannon, we saw a promise in that. He was young. He was innocent. His career was actually a little bit stronger than it is now. And we saw a bright future for the two of them. They had the twins, them babies, Moroccan and Moreau, rock and roll. And Nick Cannon, literally, when they first got together, went on a press tour about how this was the girl of his dreams. It'll be like a 16-year-old me growing up and marrying Chris Brown. Although that's not what I want. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? That would have been like, wow, I really married Chris Brown. Who would have thought that? I really ate with that. And Nick Cannon, he went on so many comedy tours. I literally won that game of, I hope I married this person in 1996 and actually married her. And he seemed to have a lot of gratitude and appreciation for being with Mariah Carey. Do you see what I'm saying? Now, he went on a podcast and he said what really happened to end the demise of the relationships. And if I was going to sum it up, I would just say insecurities. He said that Mariah has her own world and you come into her world. She's already established. And he said a man like him basically couldn't take that kind of him being the lesser in the relationship as the male who is generally the dominant figure. There's really a hard, you know, there's a hard ranking when it comes to Mariah Carey and Nick Cannon. So he felt that in the relationship and it shows in his actions today, getting all these young mixed girls pregnant and kind of having more dominance over their situation. A lot of these girls, he's their first and only baby dads. That's dominance. A lot of these girls that go back and they kind of need him for attention because his attention is spread so thin throughout 5011 kids. And so, you know, in that he's kind of showing that he wanted to regain some kind of, you know, heavy, toxic masculinity and dominance over the women in his life because he couldn't fully dominate a Mariah Carey. Now, what bothers me in this situation is, you knew who she was. Mariah Carey did not Miley Cyrus, Hannah Montana you, where she was like, oop, didn't tell you, I'm a star. Ah, I forgot to tell you, I'm a huge star. Okay, yes, I'm actually a princess. No, you knew who Mariah Carey was when you walked in that door. Now, it's tough for women in high positions in their life to find men that feel comfortable with their positions. Let's just have a real conversation. Yes, your wife can be the breadwinner, 
But I feel like there's still a certain level of submission that needs to go on that household to make it work from the feminine energy in that house. This is just my opinion. I am an island woman. I'm a West Indian woman. I'm naturally submissive. That's just us. I know that Rihanna, although she's a billionaire to ASAP Rocky's, you know, couple million, and she really brought his career back up. I know an island woman, baby. And if you are West Indian, if you are Islander, if you're from the Caribbean, you already know that lady is in there barefoot, shaking up them chicken bones and sauteing them in that pan, okay? I feel like she's in there rubbing feet, telling him how he's the real fashion killer. That's us as a culture. We bow down to our men. It's actually sickening. And it sometimes puts us in a bad position where we stay in situations long enough and men run over us culturally. That's another conversation. I'm a black American woman, but if you know, you know. You know what I mean? So that level of submission is going to come out of me naturally. I cater and it's sick. I'm talking about grease your scalp, rub your feet, cook your food, wash your back, scratch your back, oil your back, pick the bumps off your back. Like I like... It's sick. I'm a Ryan Carey, although definitely probably a submissive woman, and he said they got along great. She ain't got no time for that. It's Christmas, and, and, and mama got to sing. And now, you know, throughout the years, we found out that Nick Cannon did not own Wild and Out. So his level of billions of dollars that we thought might have thought he had to match Mariah Carey probably did not match. And so, therefore, he d dismantled his marriage. Now, I feel bad for Mariah Carey because she ended up dating that white man after and he was like a billionaire and that didn't work out. But she ended up suing him for money. And Nick Cannon used to say that he would she would threaten him and say, I'm going to go find a man with more money than you. Red flag to a man that's already insecure, already a little bit broken about your stature in life. I would have never said that to him. I just would have been like, babe, I can't find nobody else like you. But who knows if that would have got him to stay. It's a real conversation about hierarchies in relationships. Now, here's my word of warning. Technically, I think if you're a woman of this many means, I would already started out with a billionaire. My man now, he has made more than me and his company millions more. So I have not reached the pinnacles financially that he has reached yet. But I might have more fame I have not seen more money. So that dynamic of I still got something to teach you, I still got something to show you is there. And I feel like with an alpha male, there's a level of comfort in that. Let's have a real conversation about what y'all think about this. So y'all write me down in the comments, like, share, and subscribe. But let me know what y'all think. You know, what does a woman do when she's so powerful? She's trying to find a man to be the man in her house, run her household, but the insecurities of finances and status get in the way. What's a girl to do?